Hello, it's me, Erin, and I'm back on the podcast. And today my guest is me. (laughs) It's good to be back. If you haven't noticed, I took an extensive leave of absence from the podcast. And there are reasons why that I'm going to get into on today's episode. Some of the reasons are great, and some of them are bad, or more like sad, not necessarily bad. Time will tell. I've gone through a lot of life changes. I sold my show to Spotify based off my TikTok, which is incredible. So now I have a Spotify podcast, which you guys can check out. It's called Pop Spiracy. We do it live on Spotify Greenroom, Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, And uh, you can see the archives or listen to the archives on Spotify under Popspiracy. That's a huge accomplishment. Really happy with how that turned out. And obviously working on that TikTok with my co-founder, co-partner, Megan Nager, has been a year plus in the works. So we're really excited having a blast doing that, having so much fun working with them. And then also I started this other new job that's been amazing. I've been working so much. I'm writing and traveling the world. So (laughs) really grateful for that. Came right at the right time and could not be happier right now with a lot of things that are going on in my life. Obviously, the what do we call it? Oh, the elephant in the room. I was going to say the skeleton in the closet. (laughs) I was like, not exactly that. But the elephant in the room is that I went through a breakup And it was really difficult. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to address it on the podcast and whether or not I should. I decided eventually that I had to because it felt hypocritical to not. And I wanted to say something about what I have been going through And what I learned and what I experienced during this time of breakup for a couple of reasons. And one of them being, I let you guys in. And I felt like there's almost no way of closing that chapter or really moving forward with Hot Pizza Ass without talking about this experience. My relationship with this person was so intertwined to the story of the podcast. We met at the launch party of the podcast He has been a huge supporter of the show. He helped me with Patreon content. If you guys subscribe to the Patreon and support me there, he took a lot of our photo content. We collaborated on many levels. We've talked about our relationship on this show and also on social media. And he's been on the show multiple times. This is someone that I still care a lot about. And while I don't feel it's appropriate to talk about the breakup in its entirety, I do really want to say something or some things because I know that whenever I try to source questions from you, the audience, and whenever I do lives or ask me anything or advice shows, which I've done a couple of times on this podcast, you always ask me relationship questions. Questions about dating, questions about heartbreak, how to deal with other people in a romantic capacity. And I knew if I brought this vulnerability to the table, that in some way it might help someone that's listening to this, that's experienced heartbreak, that has gone through a breakup, or maybe is lonely. Because, hey, I've been there too. And I've been there a lot over this past summer. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is probably going to be emotional and difficult for me to talk about because I'm talking about this for the first time publicly. In late June slash mid-July, this is really when the relationship ended and it was my choice. There was an aspect of our relationship that I felt was not really functional and 
And it's sad because everything else was there. Like this person was like 10 out of 10 in every single category, an amazing person, incredible boyfriend, an incredible friend. Like I consider this person still, even months after, family. So it was really, really hard because I knew that because we'd been together for quite some time and And it felt even like a longer period of time because we were together during the pandemic, which I don't know about y'all, but for me, it felt like this pandemic has lasted years. And we spent like this concentrated time together getting through this really stressful, traumatic period of time and weathering the storm, finding things to do, like all these nights in without any distractions of the things that you might normally do if you're dating someone. It's like we weren't going to movies we weren't planning all of these things or going to dates where we're out and about and there's other things to distract you from the conversation or the person we spent all of this time together it felt like we were together for like a hyperspeed one and a half years like three four years and I knew we were kind of like hurtling toward engagement And with this one aspect that I felt wasn't really working in the relationship, we tried open communication and therapy, which I 100% recommend. Don't give up on people in a relationship without doing all of that stuff. Like, don't break up with people for stupid reasons. If you're doing that, then don't date them in the first place. Like, commit to the relationships that you're in. So we tried everything, in my opinion, And I knew I wasn't ready to take that next big step. So I thought it was only fair if at that time I knew I wasn't ready to move forward to pause or end the relationship. Pausing felt not correct. It's something we talked about before. You know, like breaks don't really make sense in relationships. Like just break up. Or figure it out. Like, what is a break? We're adults here. (laughs) We're not in high school anymore. (laughs) So I decided that we should separate. Now, that next month after this breakup was one of the most difficult times in a long time that I can remember. I cried literally my eyes out like I had to go to the ophthalmologist because I was I couldn't see everything was blurry (laughs) I was so scared I thought something was wrong and after multiple tests the doctor comes to me and says yeah so your eyes are incredibly dry like we don't know what's going on what you're allergic to or what's happening but you're you literally don't have tears I had no tears left to cry like Ariana Grande So they gave me some of these like lubricated or steroid drops, said that this would probably clear up in a couple of days. And it did, thank God. But how crazy is that? I dried myself out because I was crying on a daily basis and almost like nonstop. Like not like I woke up and was crying all day and went to sleep crying. It was kind of like any little thing would kind of like set me off into like a quiet tear escapade (laughs) like hearing a song about heartbreak or about a breakup or you know thinking of something that reminded me of that person would just like set me off and of course you know we were still in contact after the breakup we you know we both really care about each other and so We would check in with each other and of course there were those awful days where it was like he came to pick up all of his stuff and we just sat outside and cried. I don't even remember what we said to each other. I just remember seeing him and we both just cried and we sat down on the steps of where I live and cried that was so hard and then I remember I didn't feel like we were done like we didn't really have the time to have a conversation I had to get on a call for work 
like in 10 minutes or something like that. So I had to go inside and and I just remember how painful that specific day was. And that night I met up with someone. I met up with a friend of mine uh, for a long time, a fellow comedian and who I had been on a show with a couple of days prior, maybe earlier that week or something like that. And I remember like being in Beverly Hills, sitting across the table from that person and I cried. I had my favorite champagne. We were at Wally's. Wally's has great wine and champagne. And I'm sitting there with Krug, one of my favorite things to drink in the world. And I just started crying and it was really hard. And luckily, this person is lovely and supportive and great. And they understood. And they also kind of went through something similar, some a similar type of breakup, although his circumstance is a lot different than mine. I just remember feeling like, God, this has been a day. <laughs> and I remember that was the first day that all my eyesight got blurry and I thought it was because I was crying with mascara on. Nope. Turns out I'd just been crying for like a week straight. <laughs> After that, I tried to kind of just go through life and luckily work kept me really busy. So I had a lot to do. I was doing a lot of things and eventually I got to this point after about a month of staying busy with work and doing other things where I realized I really needed to take some time to process all of this. And by that, I mean, I meant like going away. I needed to go away. I needed actual days off. And at the time I was writing almost daily on projects um, as part of my job, but then also shooting on the weekend, like filming. And I knew this was it was just not sustainable um, because I was just suppressing everything I was feeling, even though I was crying and upset. Like every moment I had any t opportunity I had to like let a tear run down, I did it. But <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't enough. I needed like solitude. I needed to process this stuff. I needed to journal. I needed to think about if I made the right decision, how I felt about it, what I wanted next, if I felt that I had made the right decision so I went to the desert. I took a week off. I went to Desert Hot Springs and it was incredible. I went alone and I haven't taken like a solo trip in a very long time for multiple days, like without another person. Of course, like I'd been in a relationship. So normally you would do something like that with your boyfriend. And this place was super romantic. I basically took myself on a honeymoon and I think I was the only single person there. I know I was like surrounded by couples and friend groups. It's like almost like a almost a fun place that you might go with like a girlfriend. And I don't mean like a sexual girlfriend. Like there were like platonic girlfriends too, um, like friends. It's, it's just like, like a really good place to go and relax and be with some sort of companion. And there I was alone and processing all of this. And I read a bunch of feminist plays and took some really hot pictures. And that... It was fantastic. I journaled. I read. I took myself to dinner. I had some wine. I had really good food. I had a tarot card reading. It was great. It was really validating, actually. I felt like I'm on a new path um, because I can process all of this. I can. I have the ability to. And when you give yourself time, it's the best feeling in the world. It's like the only thing that makes heartbreak feel better is time. And I couldn't just like fast forward my life to where I felt differently about the situation I was in, but I could give myself a couple of days where I forced myself to kind of confront what I was feeling on a deeper level. So I read four plays that all made me cry. They were so good. I'm going to tell you what they are right now. How I Learned to Drive by Paula Vogel. A little triggering. This one's a little bit uh, creepy, but still made me cry. Uncommon Women and Others by Wendy Wasserstein, which was my least favorite, but it reminded me of Mona Lisa Smile. Love that movie. And When We Were Young and Unafraid by Sarah Treem, 
which made me lose my shit. Um, it's incredible. It's about abusive relationships and uh, domestic abuse, which I loved. And Trifles by Susan Glassbowl, which is incredible because it was written, I think, in the early 1900s. The specific year, I think, is 1916. It's a one set play. It's like very, very simple. And it's so full of feminist themes and about the things that are important to people and relationships and how oftentimes um, other people or men downplay them. These plays were ironically given to me by an ex. I won't call him an ex-boyfriend. I'll call him an ex-date dating partner. <laughs> an ex-acquaintance, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Someone gave me these plays. And at the time, our relationship had actually very much soured. Um, This person mistreated me and hurt me in ways that I could not even explain on this podcast. Um, It really sucked. And he gave me these plays like thinking, oh, yeah, you should read these. You should write something like this. This is the type of path you should be on. And I couldn't read them for the longest time because of how I felt about that person. So they just sat in my bookcase. And then finally I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I've processed that trauma. Now I'm in a different place. I can read these plays now. Maybe, in fact, I really need to read these plays now. (laughs) And I did. I read them in hot springs and hot tubs, next to pools by myself, at dinner by myself. And they were fantastic. I'm really glad that I did that. And then I went to Yosemite with my family, which was also another very emotional experience, which I don't think I will talk about on this episode of the podcast, but... Who knows? Um, It might be a future episode of the podcast. There are some um, things going on in my family right now that are also very hard to deal with, but in, in a different way. So my point of telling you this story of how I kind of handled this breakup and things that I did to make myself feel better is to say, don't let anyone rush you. This is something huge that I've had to learn. We live in a culture of immediacy that rewards immediacy, that asks us to be immediate with everything that we do. Think about it. The text messages, it's an instant way to contact someone. That's what you do when you want to talk to someone immediately, right? Emails, we're supposed to respond within 24 hours or you get a follow-up or like an are you okay message or a circling back. We're rewarded on social media for giving a hot take on something that happened that day or that minute. But in reality, nothing in life is really that immediate. A few things are. I'll take that back. But most things in life are really not that immediate. Take your time. And if you can take your time and give yourself a little bit of distance and space to think about the thing that's asking for an immediate response or the question in your heart that you feel like you need to figure out today or the problem at hand that you are processing and the way that you actually respond, if you can give yourself time in between point A and point B, I guarantee you the response that you come up with will be a response and not a reaction. Sometimes your reaction is not the response you want to give. Give yourself time and space. It's one of the best gifts that you can give yourself. I'm so glad that I did that. And then here we are a few months later. I feel like I'm maybe at the five month mark in between the breakup and life now. And I haven't released any episodes of the podcast because A, I've been busy, but B, I knew I had to say something and I just wasn't sure what. And I wanted to make sure that I put enough distance between the event, the question in my heart, the situation at hand, and my response. And it felt like five months was what I needed. 
I have felt every single way about this breakup, every single way you can think of. Sad, validated, angry, frustrated, lost, emotional, nostalgic, and happy. I have felt them all. And I knew I didn't want to sit behind the mic and press record until I felt every single aspect that I felt I was supposed to feel. Because I wanted to come back to this podcast and address this and talk about this at a point where I was able to look back at everything I've been through and look back with love, acceptance, and gratitude, which is another huge gift you can give yourself. I found that the more that I leaned into gratitude for what I've been through with this person and the ways that they were there for me, all the happy moments and silly things that made us laugh, all the little things that made the relationship special, unique, what it was, unlike what I had experienced before with other people, all of those things are the things that I want to be grateful for and the things that I want to remember. Going through a pandemic is not easy. Surviving a pandemic, especially in this city, because we had it rough for a while there. Los Angeles was opening. It was closing in December and January of last year. We, it was crazy. There were so many people that had COVID. Everything was scary. Going to the grocery store was scary. And I had a partner in crime. I had someone that really cared about me, someone that looked out for me. Someone that took care of me in all the ways that they could think of. And for that, I will always be grateful. And I knew I could not come back to the show and tell you what happened until I was 100% at that point. To be completely honest, even this day, months later as I'm talking about this, there are still areas of this where I don't know 100% where I land on. There are times when I question if I've made the right decision I don't know how this story ends, but I know where I am today, and I know that I've learned a lot. I feel like I'm a completely different person. It's hard to go through a pandemic without being a completely different person, right? And I know that I'm proud of myself for how I handled the situation how I expressed my truth, and how I did what I truly believe was the best decision for me and also for the other person. Even though it was hard. And I think that's what love is. That breakup, to me, feels like an act of love. Because even though it's hard, even though there are times when I really want to reach out, I feel that I'm at a place in my maturity where I can ask myself, is this truly the best decision for me and for the other person? Sometimes breakups be like that. And look, I'm sorry if I'm sounding all over the place. This episode might be really hard to listen to because I have recorded it a million times. I've recorded at least three episodes of this episode, trying to figure out what was the best way, the best angle, the best description of what I went through and and how vulnerable I wanted to be. And this is the only time I've recorded it where I have cried. And this is probably going to be the one that I release. So I'm sorry if you're listening to this in your car or on a hike and and it's making you sad, but I really do hope that if anyone that's hearing this is going through a breakup and or maybe you're thinking about someone that you love, I hope that this gives you some sort of inspiration or strength or maybe some ideas on things that helped me feel better that might also help you feel better. Journaling, taking space for yourself, going on a solo trip. Not retreating into, you know, bad decisions and not thinking that moving on or dating someone else or hooking up with someone else is going to solve your problem or ease your pain. It's not. It's not. Spend time with you, honor you, and figure out your best spiritual path forward, whatever that is for you. 
And that is what I have for you today. I am back and I will be creating more episodes. I'm going to figure out a schedule that works so that I can come back to Hot Pizza Ass and create more content, hopefully with interviews again, (laughs) and not just me giving my update on where I am in life. Although I did enjoy this, and I thank you all for listening. Thank you for your, your support, your love, your reviews, for checking in on me, and most importantly for your patience as I processed this and as I figured out how to move forward. Thank you so much. And until next time, I'm Erin Darling Terrell, and you are listening to Hot Pizza Ass Podcast.